Eisman and Paul McGuire. It's great to have you with us. With Tennessee losing earlier today, Jacksonville has clinched its first ever division title, and now they can concentrate on getting a first round bye, something that Mark Brunel and the other injured Jaguars could desperately use. Tonight, Joe, for the injured Brunel, we see rookie Jonathan Quinn. Well, Mike, with Jonathan Quinn at quarterback, you'd like to be able to support him and help him out with Fred Taylor, the running back. You also know that Jacksonville's coaches are used to being able to go with three quarterbacks and also, they put some pretty good support system around him. But I really believe when you look at this football game, it's going to be Jonathan Quinn that's going to have to make the difference. Sure, all eyes may be on 84, Randy Moss, but Jonathan Quinn has got to be the guy tonight who's got to match Randall Cunningham pass for pass if Jacksonville stands a chance. It's not going to be easy matching that Minnesota offense. They come in here tonight averaging a league-high 34 points a game and trying to nail down home field advantage throughout the playoff. Paul, they have so many weapons that can kill you. The most lethal of all is Randy Moss. Well, let's go back to April through the draft. 19 teams passed on Randy Moss. What has he done since coming to Minnesota? Well, he went into this weekend leading the National Football League in yards receiving and touchdowns receiving with 15. He's got, he was selected to the Pro Bowl as a number one guy pick, so he's going to start. He's on a football team that has a chance to go to the Super Bowl. So the other part about it that's really good about this guy, he's got two more regular season games left. This guy is special. All right, Paul, and Jacksonville has a great rookie of its own, running back Fred Taylor. The Vice John Randall looking to shut him down. Next on ESPN's Sunday Night Football. After the results of the earlier games, the Jaguars have clinched their first ever division title in their fourth year. The Vikings have clinched home field advantage with a win tonight. They have it all the way through the playoffs. Let's get on to the sideline with our colleague Solomon Wilcox. He's with Jacksonville head coach Tom Coughlin. Thanks, Mike. Coach Coughlin, now that you clinch your first division title, does that change anything in terms of what you may want to do tonight? Not really. We're very excited about being the division champions of the AFC Central, but we came here prepared. We have Jonathan Quinn as our quarterback. It's going to ca uh, cause us to have everyone involved. We've all got to play better than we've ever played before. We're excited about the opportunity. How much of the playbook do you expect Jonathan Quinn to be able to execute in this his first career start? Well, we started out with a large menu early in the week and tapered it down to some things that he does well and that we felt we could execute. All right, thanks, Coach. And Mike, Jonathan Quinn will now become the sixth quarterback to start for Tom Coughlin in his four years as the head coach in Jacksonville. And Solomon, he's had great success with those guys, too. Dennis Green, tremendous success here at Minnesota. Six playoffs in seven seasons as the head coach of the Vikings. There's a reunion here tonight. Bud Grant, the legendary head coach of the Minnesota Vikings, and so many of his great players have come to honor trainer Fred Zambrelletti who had been with the team since the beginning. Carl Eller, the all-time leader in sacks, 130 from his defensive end spot. Alan Page, another just legendary defensive lineman with the Purple People Eaters. There's Fred Zambrelletti, the trainer there since they got the franchise. And he remembers the good old days out at Metropolitan Stadium. No dome, wind chills, 50 below. <laughs> Let me tell you, those were the good old days for the Vikings. I played in that stadium. There's no good old days for the people that came in. Jacksonville will get the opening kickoff. Mitch Berger, who has done a tremendous job kicking the ball deep, will kick it to Reggie Barlow, 84, Mike Logan, 32. They waited to go on. Barlow, six yards deep, he'll keep it there. 
For the Jaguars on offense, rookie Jonathan Quinn gets his first start in relief last week. He showed a big arm and poise. He has terrific weapons to use. 4.8 yards a carry and the receiving tandem of Smith and McCardell. An excellent line with the all-world Baselli and another complete tackle, Searcy. DeMarco starts for the injured Tilsky up front. All-world? All-world. All-universe. <laughs> Jonathan Quinn out of Middle Tennessee State. To throw on first down. Dumps it off Taylor. And Taylor out of bounds at the 31-yard line. Jimmy Hitchcock took him out there. The Viking defense, small but very quick, typified by All-Pro John Randall. He leads the club with eight and a half sacks. He's a Pro Bowl starter again. Great speed and linebacker. Ed McDaniel moved to the middle this year, made his first Pro Bowl, one of nine Vikings selected. The secondary has forced a lot of turnovers. Jimmy Hitchcock started the weekend with six interceptions, second in the NFC. Draw play, Taylor with two tackles. Fred Taylor, first down and more to midfield. Taylor replaced the injured James Stewart, and they may never get this kid out of the lineup. You know something, Joe? They got to get John Randall back inside and away from Baselli because on the first two plays, this is what Baselli has done to John Randall. Watch this. Knocking him to the outside. He's really not even getting off the line of scrimmage. Well, what happens is you don't get a chance to get any penetration inside, and you allow the blocks to be made so that Taylor can find a hole. At midfield. Play action by Quinn. Too high for Jimmy Smith at the 35. The only rookie in NFL history to make his first start against a team that was 10 games over 500. Want a little more pressure? <laughs> There's Brunel. They expect he'll be back for the playoffs. He has a high ankle sprain, one of the fine quarterbacks in pro football. Taylor against the blitz, and they get him in the backfield. Gary Ball, the first man to break through from the nose. What happens is Minnesota on defense, they want to try and get penetration. Jerry Ball, number 96, is their big guy. He's right on the nose. He's just going to fire through as they try to get the ball on the left side to Fred Taylor. He may be real big, but he is real quick in a very small area. Third and 13 for Quinn. Reggie Barlow in as an additional wide receiver. Quinn changing the play, and now he has to use a timeout. That's the rookie inexperience as the play clock was winding down. Timeout, no score in Minnesota. Nothing in Paul. Why did the Jaguars have to use that early timeout? Well, look at Tony Baselli. Not only is he calling the line play, look at this. He's calling, telling the line what to do. He hears the audible. Now he tells Fred. Here, number 28. <laughs> He's not only quarterback, but playing tackle. Traffic cop. Joe Theismann predicted yesterday the Jaguars would use two early timeouts because of the rookie's inexperience. Pacelli helping out again. Comes the blitz. And Quinn goes down in the arms of Corey Fuller. What happens is that's when you want to blitz the rookie, when he has to spread the formation out and he's really got no help. Corey Fuller just slides inside. Jonathan Quinn has no idea that Fuller is even coming from the right side. So after a couple of impressive opening plays that got them to midfield, the Jaguars will have to punt. Barker kicking corner. Nailed as he got to the 28 by Mike Logan. A nine-yard kick after a 40 or a nine yard return after a 41 yard punt no score early from the metrodome and sunday night football is brought to you by at&t it's all within your reach by chevy s10 like a rock by sony playstation live in your world play in ours by charles schwab and by miller highlight 
The Vikings take over for the first time at their own 27-yard line. It is scoreless first quarter. Randy Moss, the rookie sensation, flanked right. Cunningham to throw. Carter couldn't hold it at the 45-yard line. Deion Figures was on him. What Randall Cunningham wanted to do coming out is stretch this defense, let them know they're going to try and go down the field. Chris Carter against the double zone, which means the corner's rolled up and the safety's behind. He just slides around the middle. Kevin Hardy does a nice job of getting back just to distract the vision back to Randall Cunningham. Just off his fingertips. Robert Smith on the sweep. Takes it to the 30. For the Viking offense, Randall Cunningham continues the season of his career. The NFL's number one rated passer has 29 touchdown strikes, only nine picks. Robert Smith back in the lineup after a knee injury, complimenting the threat of the Pro Bowl receivers Moss and Carter. Three Pro Bowlers up front, Stussy his second, McDaniel his tenth, all starts, and Christie voted to his first. Leroy Horde checks in on third down and six. Lucky, lucky. Cunningham with good time, throws sideline, complete. First down, and he got it out to Matthew Hatchett, who came up big for him a week ago against Baltimore. Six catches, 95 yards. We really saw Matthew Hatchett a couple weeks ago against Chicago just start to work himself into the lineup. Last week, he gets the six catches, as you mentioned, Mike. Now, Randall Cunningham feels very comfortable. Watch him go up for this ball. He extends himself, gets his legs cut out, still hangs on to it for the first down. Cunningham says he's probably worked more with Hatchet than any other of his wide receivers, and he wants to keep him in the game and keep his confidence up. Smith dancing across the 40. Smith, who had a club record. 1,266 yards rushing a year ago. Often injured throughout his career, but he's gone over 1,000 this season as well. Well, I like talking to Leroy Hoard yesterday when he was sitting there talking to us. We didn't even invite him over. Leroy invites himself. <laughs> uh, he comes in and sits down. He says, let me tell you something about this guy. Robert Smith is faster when he's limping than I am going full speed. <laughs> <laughs> There's Leroy. Second and eight. Leroy has been tremendous coming off the bench with Smith out injured. Cunningham with a short set throw for his tight end incomplete. Glover couldn't hold it. Kevin Hardy right on him. Here's the Jaguars defense. Schmenge leads the down lineman and tackles leads the club in sacks with seven. Talented linebackers, especially Poff, their major free agent acquisition, and Hardy, who was flourished after moving to the weak side. Injuries in the secondary against the team you can least afford to have them. Figures starts for Aaron Beasley, Davis for Donovan Darius. Kevin Hardy moved to the weak side where they can use his athleticism more. He's had a sensational year. Delayed blitz. Cunningham flush. Gets a block downfield. And runs out of bounds at the 36. Cunningham gets a nice block from Carter downfield. He really does, Paul. But I'll tell you, just the decision for Randall Cunningham to take off and run creates problems for anybody that wants to try and defense this defense. You can cover people well like Jacksonville's did, but then what do you do with this? Now, Randall, he says, okay, hey, Chris, let me just put the ball up. Instead of running out of bounds, now I'll run out of bounds and protect myself. He's running smarter, but he also makes the decision to run a little more later in the season to create some problems in the playoffs. Smith is the single setback. He gets it on the swing. Pushed out of bounds to 32 by Schmendi, who dropped back from his defensive end spot. Brian Billick, the offensive coordinator of the Minnesota Vikings, one of the many names that are mentioned with a lot of different teams with potential head coaching changes. He will not be here next year. I don't think so. <laughs> I There's can guarantee you. Dick Duran, the defensive coordinator, who's really done a, a terrific job, a different type of a philosophy for the Jaguars. They play about 85% zone. They want to make you earn every yard, and that's what the Vikings are doing here. The Vikings have scored more on opening drives on touchdowns than anyone else in the NFL this year. 
Smith on the draw, taken down around the ankles, gets to the 30-yard line, and no more. Eddie Mason, 53, got him. Joe, look at this book that uh, Ryan's holding. It looks like a wine menu. And everybody has these big cards. He's got a little, little book. That means two things. There's not a lot there. He's got very good eyes. I tend to think he's got... <laughs> Cunningham flush, drops it to Horn, he couldn't hold it. Great improvisation by Cunningham, nearly pulled off a huge play. Kevin Hardy had this play. He had, Le he had Leroy Horde. That was his man. Kevin Hardy comes up to the line of scrimmage, sees Leroy Horde. Watch this. He sees Horde coming out. So he goes after Horde. He's there. Leroy Horde just can't quite bring it in. Now watch Hardy. He looks like he's going to blitz, and he sees Leroy Horde coming out. So he goes after him. That's a nice play. Gary Anderson has kicked an NFL record 34 in a row. This one's from 48 yards. The guy just doesn't miss. He said he's waited his entire career to play in a dome. He's making it pay off. Anytime the Vikings just get a field goal, the other team's defense feels very good about themselves. 3-0, Minnesota. A sold-out crowd that has really turned up the volume this year in the Metrodome. Paint sales are way up, too. Berger crushes another one. Barlow, four yards deep, he'll bring it out. Reggie Barlow stops short of this corner. The ESPN Sunday Night Football continues next week with one of the NFL's great rivalries. The Washington Redskins head to Big D to take on Troy Aikman and the Dallas Cowboys. Join Joe Theismann, Paul McGuire, and me right after primetime at 8.15 Eastern. ESPN and ABC, your exclusive networks for primetime NFL football. Jacksonville takes over just shy of its own 20. Quinn. Deep down the sideline, incomplete, intended for Smith, covered beautifully by Jimmy Hitchcock. Michael, I like the fact that Chris Palmer, the offensive coordinator, is willing to take shots with Jonathan Quinn. His strongest asset probably is his arm and his ability to get the ball down the field. So Chris has decided he's going to try and do it. Here he is against Jimmy uh, Hitchcock. Jimmy Smith, the fastest of their receivers, and this is what Jimmy Hitchcock told us yesterday. He said if they're going to go deep, they're probably going to try and do with Jimmy Smith. And this is the area where the Vikings can be vulnerable. Their pass defense ranked 24th in the NFL. Fake the end around, throw the screen back the other way, and the Vikings weren't fooled by any of it. Dwayne Rudd, number 57 was ready to eat this thing up. He and Ed McDaniel was going to the Pro Bowl. Both of these guys were there, and they read the screen. There was no chance. If this thing would have been completed, it would have been for a loss. Fred Taylor, 28, watch this. He blocks. Now, Russ is staying with him, number 57. He is right there. That is tremendous defense. I'll tell you what. By the second quarter, you'll see Jonathan Quinn be still alive, completing more passes, because I think he'll be settled down. Right now, everything is just sailing on him. They have thrown five of the last six plays. Quinn flush. Oh, he tries to get the first down. He is right at the sticks just across the ESPN goal first and ten line. Oh, Orlando Thomas. <laughs> you see what I meant about being alive? Yeah. <laughs> Tony Baselli. Now, you know, this guy is all world. Watch this. John Randall, he, just take, he gets help, though. But they push John Randall to the outside. And here's your guy. Jonathan Quinn takes off, does a good job right now. He says, I think I want to slide. I think, I think you got to work on your slides just a little bit. He's 6'5", 245. Taylor, Thirsty, pulling. They'll get a yard and no more. Since 1970, rookie quarterbacks have had little success, a winning percentage of 34.6. It's not a good stat, is it? No, it's not, and this is the first start, and that is a rookie quarterback. Second and nine, Jacksonville. 
Quinn changing the play again. Here comes the blitz. Quick out to Smith. Oh, nice tackle oh. by Jimmy Hitchcock. That was sweet. I mean, that was that was so well played. Matter of fact, that whole sequence on both sides of the ball. Jonathan making the change and then Jimmy making the tackle. Look at Jimmy. Jimmy Hitchcock is just playing this perfectly. I mean, there's an outstanding tackle. Now let's go back to Pacelli, who is tackle, all world, slash, and also quarterback in this game. <laughs> Third and five. There he is. And they didn't get it off in time. You know, we were on a break, and you were talking about third and long situations for Jacksonville. Yeah, they're going to have All a third and ten again. Five to the snap, number 62, offense. Go third down. They called Ben Coleman, the left guard, for moving. What it is is it's the fan noise is creating a problem of communication between the quarterback and the line. That's why Tony Baselli is trying to direct the flow of the line. In other words, slide to your right, he's saying. Slide to your right. Chris Palmer's being challenged with trying to get the plays in a little quicker so that they make, can make the audible changes. Quinn hangs in the pocket and throws. It was very close. Forward momentum out to the 40-yard line, but pushed back. Will Moore with the catch. They're going to mark it around the 39. That'll be short of a first down. This is an excellent mark because Will Moore was coming back to the ball. And even though he's hit, he still didn't have the first down when he caught the ball. He did the right thing coming back at the ball. Barker's going to punt to Palmer. Joe, at this point, are the bu butterflies starting to disappear? Yeah, you, still could, there. you could see it in that throw, Mike. You saw the early ones were high and wild. That one was down a little bit more. And, and had a little better pace on it. Barker to punt to Palmer. Low line drive kick. Palmer with a chance to bring it back. Spins out of one tackle. And then it's buried back at the 10-yard line. Loses four on the return. The punt was 47. George Jones made the tackle on special teams. He's got a 3-0 Minnesota lead. Randy Moss said his goal was to rip up the NFL. Well, he did that. Let's, what's his next goal? Here's what he's done. Nine touchdown catches over 40 yards. Only one off the NFL record set by Elroy Crazy Legs Hirsch in 1951. He's got two games to tie it or beat it. Moss by TD Toss. Yes, sir. Now that is terrific. That sounds like a bumper sticker. Uh-oh. Boy, is that one off the mark. Two to three wise guys. <laughs> I know one of them. Play action, they throw it underneath. For a couple to Charles Evans. That's a little bit of the problems and the dimensions of this offense. You've got Randy Moss who can stretch it vertically, as we've so we showed with his touchdown receptions. But then you have Randall Cunningham who feels so comfortable that if he doesn't see what he likes down the field, he dumps it off and still winds up with an eight, seven yard game. Moss goes wide right. Smith is back in at running back for the Vikings. Smith will get the carry. Robert Smith with that great first up to the 25 for a first down. You know, I really like this play. It's like a quick draw. And, and, and you've got to have a good fullback in the game, and you also have a great running back. Yeah, but it all starts with the pro bowler right in the middle, Jeff Preston. He's right there. He's going to make the block right here and allow Robert to fire up inside. Number 62 does a good job on Yurkovich. Just stands him up, allows Robert to get into the secondary and pick up the necessary yards for the first and ten. Draw play to Smith, a lot of room. Smith with great speed, 40, 45 and out of bounds. That's what they miss with Leroy Hurd, Leroy Hoard, that burst of speed when he gets through the line. It's also what they've missed in their previous playoff runs. Well, the reason this one works, you go to another pro bowler, Joe, is number 64, Randall McDaniel. Now watch him. 
he just caved Jerkovic down to the inside. And then look at the blocking downfield. I mean, what I really like is going back to the same play twice. Hats on hats. Spotted at the 46, first and 10 Vikings. Cunningham throws on the run. Carter diving for what he can get to the Jacksonville 46. Kevin Hardy made the tackle. Hey, Mike, I'll tell you, here, here's the situation with Randy Moss. What the Jaguars want to do is they want to have somebody over the top. They want to bump him. He's out. Randy Moss is outside. Watch this. You're going to see him get bumped, but look what it does to Chris Carter. Because they're so concerned with getting a hand on Randy Moss, it leaves Chris Carter out there for an easy six, seven yard completion. That's just one of the problems that he presents a defense. Second and two for Minnesota in Jacksonville territory. Here comes the blitz and they got him back at the 45 yard line. Kevin Hardy came clean. <laughs> Randall McDaniel just, I mean, Randall Cunningham just disappeared. Kevin Hardy, number 51, he faked a blitz in the last series. This time he's coming. Look at this, absolutely clean. Randall Cunningham was trying to fake and go to Moss on the outside and never had a chance. Terrific call by Dick Duran. Just enough pressure. One of the things he wanted to do tonight was to take Randall Cunningham out of his rhythm and pick and choose his spots to bring pressure. Four wide receivers set on third and nine, and now Cunningham will use the timeout as the play clock was winding down. The Vikings still lead 3 nothing first quarter. Shots provided by the Southwest Airlines Aerial Cam, high above the Metrodome for ESPN Sunday Night Football. We are in Minnesota, where the 13-1 Vikings are leading the 10-4 Jaguars. The Muppets are with us. Third and nine. Movement up front. Ball start prior to the snap. Number 71, offense. Still third down. David Dixon, the right guard. Dick Duran has done such a terrific job with this defense tonight. What he's doing, I think he's frustrating this Minnesota offense a little bit. They're so used to living off of a big play, having some type of a big completion. There have been eight passes. Not one has gone towards Randy Moss yet. So he's accomplishing what he wants. Brian Billick is just going to have to pick his spots now to get that excitement back in his offense. Third and 14. Comes the blitz. Coming in, throws for Hatchet. Picks away at the last moment incomplete. Dion Figures just got a fingertip on him. What a great play by Dion Figures. I mean, he, he just, you talk about total extension going for the ball. That if he doesn't leave the ground and dive with this ball, it could have been touchdown for Hatchet. Watch Dion Figures 27. Watch him close and now get up in the air to go for the ball. It's a heck of a play. Berger to punt to Mike Logan. Logan from the 10. Got it back to the 19-yard line. 48-yard punt, a nine-yard return. ABC's exclusive presentation of the Bowl Championship Series begins Friday, January 1st at 4.30. UCLA and Wisconsin in the Rose Bowl, presented by AT&T. At 8.30, Texas A&M and Ohio State in the Nokia Sugar Bowl. Saturday, January 2nd at 8, the FedEx Orange Bowl, Florida and Syracuse. And on Monday night, January 4th at 8, the National Championship game, Florida State and Tennessee in the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. Uh, is in the slot. Quinn to throw on first down. Drops it out in a flat to Zach Crockett, who takes a shot from Dwayne Rudd. <laughs> Are they laying some lumber or what, huh? <laughs> Holy mackerel. Woo! Jonathan Quinn does a nice job of looking down the field, looking down the field, doesn't have what he wants, just dumps the ball out. Perfectly fine. Out of blocking up front, Tony Gatelli and Clemens. Where are you going? A little face mask there. Second and six, Quinn. 
Little bootleg throws on the run. Got it to a huge tight end, Damon Jones. Jones is 6'5", 265, and can run. They think he has a world of potential as a tight end. It's a nice play by Quinn. It is, and, and he showed this last week against Tennessee, and he showed it again. He has mobility. They move him on a bootleg. Again, a terrific call by Chris Palmer, the coordinator. Don't leave him be a sitting duck. Get him out on the run, and he's able to make the throw. Well played, Taylor. Nowhere to go. Collinette was waiting for him, along with Jason Fisk. I mean, wasn't it refreshing talking to Jonathan Quinn yesterday? I mean, I mean, yesterday, this guy is so cool. We'll get to it in the second quarter. He's the refreshing personality who's getting a great opportunity tonight. Right now, his club down 3-0 to the Minnesota Vikings. This to be the fourth quarterback taken in the draft. They're going, whoa, Manning, whoa, Leaf, whoa, Batch. Oh, Quinn. He happens to be the last guy standing here as well, and that's really the way his entire career has worked out. He's been a football player who's just sort of been in the right place to have the opportunity. After Brunel and Jamie Martin got hurt, he said, people asked him if his teammates had confidence in him. He said, they had to. I'm the only one left. Fred Taylor across midfield to the 48-yard line. I'll tell you, for Jag the Jaguars to be successful, now this young man's got to be on target, but... Fred Taylor has to get 100 yards. I mean, he has to get 100 yards. He has to be part of most of this offense. Paul, not only does he have to get a lot of offense, I think he's got to have to get a fair amount of it on first and second down to keep him in third and short, convertible third down. Third and five for Quinn and the Jaguar. Knocked loose by Randall, picked up by Baselli. <laughs> Why not? He's done everything else. He's called plays. He's directed the line. Why not let him run the ball? That time he drove Randall by him, but he still got an arm out. Well, John Randall is the reason why he's all pro. Watch this. Paselli is blocking him, and watch what he does with his left arm. He's going to reach in and knock the ball down. Then Tony Baselli, why not? You're absolutely right, Joe. Pick up the ball and run with it. Here comes Baselli. I tell you, if I were on defense and I saw this guy coming, I would be yelling for some help. Jacksonville has Leon Searcy down. We'll check on him in a moment. Leon Searcy, the right tackle, down on the field a long time, able to walk off under his own power. They were looking at his right knee after the last play. Came from the Pittsburgh Steelers. And it's usually left tackles that go to the Pro Bowl. Right tackles are really ignored in the NFL, but he is one of the best. David Palmer back awaiting the punt of Brian Barker. Beautiful high kick. And Palmer comes up to make this fair catch at the 14-yard line. ESPN Sunday Night Football is brought to you by Lee Dungarees. Can't bust them. By MCI Five Cent Sundays. Pay the least on the day you call the most. By Southwest Airlines, proud sponsor of the NFL and official airline of the Super Bowl. And by NASCAR 99 from EA Sports. The Vikings take over at their 14. Smith. Ooh, hit in the backfield and drilled Tony Brackett. The kind of plays he has become famous for, they just want more of them. Someone hollers, would you please block 90? <laughs> Someone put a, a helmet on 90, Tony Brackett. Watch this. He goes inside Glover, the tight end, and nobody really slows him down. He Clyde, got there Simmons, the ball got there. Clyde Simmons, who was his mentor here in Jacksonville on the starting right defensive end, said he needs to decide when he wants to be great because he has shown flashes of it. Tremendous speed. Cunningham throws off his back foot, got it to Hatchet. Was it inbounds? It was the 31. A gain of 19. This is what happens when you get a chance to beat the press. What is so critical, if you're going to double a receiver, 
The guy up front, usually the corner, has got to get a good jam. If he doesn't, you create a void in a hole. Randall Cunningham, noticing this, manages to get the ball up. Look at that. The safety's nowhere near him to come and make the play. Travis Davis got over late. He's starting for the injured Donovan Darius. Two members of the Jaguar secondary out with injuries. Beasley the other. Smith on the draw pass. Maybe a yard, no more. Swallowed up by the middle of the Jacksonville defense. This is not a completion, gentlemen. I mean, Hatchet doesn't stay in bounds. He gets his left foot down, but he doesn't get his right foot down. Yeah, but they already ran a play. I know that. Watch this. Here's the catch. Left foot. Look at this. Now. When he has uh, it's, a catch. No, it's a catch. No, the, he got the first one down. The left one, and then the right one, and then the left one out of bounds. That was a catch. Right? Yeah. It was close, though. I know. Cunningham under pressure from Bracken and threw it away. Did you say when Brackens is ready? Yes. Brackens is ready. The guy who's 6'4", 260 out of the University of Texas. He's been hampered by a high ankle sprain most of two years. You just can't block him. Andrew Glover is trying to block him and really get in his way. Defensively, what the Jaguars are doing is they're creating a mismatch and they're forcing Todd Stucey to take the inside rusher and leave an Andrew Glover or nobody one-on-one -on -one with Tony Bracken. Stucey's on the sidelines right now, which means with the injury to Corey Stringer, they have lost both of their starting tackles for this game. Cunningham, short set, throws over the middle. That'll be short of a first down out to the 40-yard line. A gain of seven to Carter, but not enough. Mike Logan was there on coverage. I tell you, there's a reason they're short on this one. Uh, Ronaldo Wynn is in there. This defensive line putting an awful lot of penetration on the offensive line. And again, the Vikings are without their two starting tackles. Reggie Barlow will drop deep this time. He's number 84, waits at his own 14-yard line. Barlow, number one in the conference, 13.4, an average punt return. Got this one back to the 18-yard line after a punt of 50 from Mitch Berger. The Jaguars keeping it close. The Vikings only with a field goal and a 3-0 lead. He's on top, 3-0 over the Jaguars. 11-15 to go, second quarter from the Metrodome in Minneapolis. Tony was selling up. We're, we're going to see him, all the things he does. Now he's a traffic cop. He's moving Taylor over. Now he's telling the offensive line and everyone else what to do. And now, after he gets them all settled, look what he does to John Randall. Got to get all these things straightened out before you block somebody. You know what Keep it on the ground to Fred Taylor across the 20 to the 21. I'd have to say that I'd have to say that Jacksonville is executing their game plan offensively and defensively to the team. They're running the football just enough to be able to keep the pressure off of Jonathan Quinn. And of course, Tony Baselli is the place you want to go. Randall's outside, now they double on him with Coleman. Fred Taylor shows a nice bit of patience and then he presses the hole. Brian DeMarco in a right tackle for Leon Searson. Quinn in the flat to Taylor. Got away from Jerry Ball out to the 26-yard line, but Kaylee Wong got him down. Brian DeMarco got hurt on that play because Vaselli throws John Randall into him. Tony's throwing everybody around. Here's a guy who gets himself up and really gets what you'd call a game face. And he just, they just throw him. You notice he shoves it right through and hits DeMarco in the back. Third and two for Jacksonville. Draw play to Taylor. Nothing doing. Purple shirts galore in the Jacksonville backfield. Derek Alexander with the stop. We talked about the job, job Dick Duran is doing defensively. Coach Fazio, the defensive coordinator of the Vikings, is picking and choosing when he wants to go after Jonathan Quinn as well. That time he brought a blitz, alerted the linebackers, be careful for the run, they stopped it. Parker, who was a pro bowler a year ago, will punt to David Palmer. Just got it out of there. Palmer on the run at the 42. 
flung down at the 49, a 36-yard punt. Mike Logan again down on special teams for Jacksonville. And the Vikings nearly got to this punt. Still, 3-0. That's Corey Stringer, the 350-pound right tackle, out for this game with a groin and an ankle injury. Todd Stussy, his counterpart on the left side, was out earlier with an ankle sprain. He's back in there now. First and 10, Minnesota from its own 49. Cunningham with a quick throw. The tight end wasn't looking, and it hit Kevin Hardy. Incomplete intended for Glover. Actually, Mike, I think that might have hit Andrew Glover right in the back. You know, normally you talk about hitting a guy between the eight and the two, but you'd usually like to not have his name on the jersey when you do it. Randall's going to get the ball off. He checks it, doesn't ever turn around. The ball winds up, no, it hit him in the head. Didn't hit him in the back. <laughs> Randy Moss has not caught a pass. That's an upset in itself. The Viking offense, only 106 yards in total offense so far. They average nearly 400 a game. Here comes the blitz. Cunningham still has time. Dropped by Moss. There is, had a first down. there is something you really don't see with this young man. He's got such great hands and great concentration. And that ball hits him. You talk about the numbers, Joe? Eight to four? Look at this guy. This ball hits him right, unless it gets to his chest. What happens is he also turns his head away. Watch this. He's thinking about running. He's not looking at the ball. He's thinking about making the move on Dion figures, not concentrating on the catch. Very seldom will you ever see a ball get to his body. Leroy Horde comes in on third and ten. Here comes the blitz. Cunningham rolls away from it, throws deep for Mark, hits and incomplete. Good defense by Travis Davis. Jacksonville has done a tremendous job covering in the secondary. Well, they blitzed the corner, Dave Thomas, number 41. And as long as Randy Moss is outside, they can roll the corners to him. Their figures comes up, just barely gets a piece of them. But because Randall Cunningham has to scramble, it allows Davis to come over and make a play on the ball. It's a good job by this Jacksonville defense. They put Mike Logan back this time for the punt. He has sure hands. Not the return guy that Barlow is, but pretty good anyway. They'll let it go, and it's into the end zone. There's a marker down on the play. 51-yard punt, but only a net of 31 will check the penalty. This flag came out of the end zone. Johnny Greer is our referee tonight. Usually when the official that far away throws it, it's on one of the gunners coming down. Here. Holding number 41 during the kick will penalize from the 20-yard line, first down and 10 at the 10. Dave Thomas, the corner, called for a hold. Going back to block for the punt. Jacksonville has the ball when we come back. Overhead shots provided by the Southwest Airlines Aerial Cam. High above the Metrodome for ESPN Sunday Night Football. 3-0 Minnesota Vikings with nine minutes to go in the first half. Jacksonville has had terrible field position the entire first half. Quinn to throw. Knocked away and nearly picked off Alvis with it. Well, you know, I just love the call. There's so much of the field that has to be defense, and you cut your fastest guy loose and let him try and run on down the field. I like the way Chris Palmer is calling this thing. He's not backing off one bit at all. Quinn goes back, good five-step drop. He's got a gun for an arm. He lays it out in a good place. McDonald just can't quite make a play on it. Aldous Witted was an ACC sprint champion. A guy who's had to learn how to catch the football. He didn't have much of a shot at that one. Ball on the blitz. It's a screen to Taylor. Goes outside his blockers and taken down at the 15. Money.
Friday night countdown. Tomorrow night at 6.30 p.m. Eastern. Join Mike Tirico, Tom Jackson, and Sterling Sharp for the latest word around the league. Then at 8 on ABC, it's Monday Night Football. Terrell Davis and the 13-1 Broncos battle Dan Marino and the Dolphins. ESPN and ABC, your exclusive network for prime time NFL football. The Viking fans on their feet. Third and five, Jacksonville. Quinn with time throws too high for McCardell. I'll tell you, Keenan McCardell was open coming yeah, in. I but, mean, if, if that ball's low enough, it's a first down. But it's so hard to step into a throw when you got Dwayne Clemens hanging around your waist. Jonathan Quinn tries to get this thing out to Keenan, but he's got Clemens just wrapped around his waist and couldn't step into it. Jacksonville with five possessions and now five punts. Barker to kick to Palmer. And the Vikings should enjoy good field position again. Another low driving kick. Palmer all the way back to the 32. And takes it back to the 43 before he's brought down. There's a marker down on the play all the way back at the 20-yard line. Face mask against Jacksonville. trying to find out if they want to punt it again. I tell you what, I like the way Johnny Greer runs the game. The fine official. Personal foul, face man. Number 21 of the kicking team will penalize from the line of scrimmage and re-kick. Aaron Beasley is called for the penalty. They could either take it at their own 43-yard line or force him to go back to the seven and kick it again. Well, you got David Palmer back there, and that was a pretty good kick. Right there, you're going to see him grab his face mask. There it is. Just grab him and throw him to the ground. Oh, yeah. That's a good call by the official. Can't do that. Well, uh, this is the, the major variety, but it's only half the distance, so they'll only get about seven and a half yards on the penalty. But they're going to have to kick it again to Palmer. And Palmer just shy of the 50-yard line this time. Low snap, but he comes up with it. Low line drive kick again and takes a bounce out of bounds near midfield. 41 that time, so the penalty hurt the Jaguar. One guy that the Vikings have got to get involved in this game is Randy Moss. The Jaguars have done an excellent job. They're putting two people on him. They keep somebody over the top, and they keep him close to him. If they don't do that, Deion Figures just jams him at the line of scrimmage, and then when he finally does get open, Randall Cunningham has to scramble around, and Davis comes over and makes the play. They have done an effective job of taking Randy Moss out of this offense. They've only thrown the ball to him twice. He dropped one. And it's not caught a ball. Draw play to Smith. Hit at the line of scrimmage. Picks up a couple. Let's go to Solomon Wilcox. Yeah, Mike, before the game, I talked to several members of the Jacksonville secondary, and they told me that no one has really been physical with Randy Moss and that they want to force him to try and catch the ball underneath going over the middle of the field. They say Moss really doesn't want to catch the ball over the middle, and Mike, so far, that strategy seems to be working. Solomon, that's about the third team that's told us that this year, that no one's been physical. Maybe you don't have much luck doing it. <laughs> Chicago told us that a couple of weeks ago. Cunningham under pressure, hit as he throws, Moss with his first catch at the Jacksonville 37. What a nice job Randy Moss do does of coming back to the ball. Probably the best thing that happened to him in this football game was dropping the first pass because now you're going to get his attention and his focus back. He drives with a little stutter step on figures. Now watch him come back to the ball. 
He just comes back to make the play. Tough to go one-on-one -on -one with him. Vikings on top, 3-0. Busted play. Smith. If that was the true option, yes, that was the slowest developing yes. option I've ever seen. It was a true option, Mike. Brian Billick has put this in and asked Randall Cunningham to try and challenge the defensive end a little bit more. Watch what he does. Play fake. All right, now, I'm going to challenge the end a little bit. No, no, I'm not even going to run it. Robert, you go do it. <laughs> this one needs a couple of more reps in practice. I'll this one needs what. to be taken out. Yeah. If, if that was. It was. If it was. No, I'm just saying, if it was a busted play, Randall did oh. the right thing. Yeah. Here, you have it. I don't want any part of this thing. thing I'm dropping to you. It's a loss of three, second and 13. Cunningham into double coverage. Moss can't get there. Tipped away, Dave Thomas in front of Randy Moss. But you know what, at the end of this play, when you talk about Randy Moss and all the wonderful things that this young man can do, is watch at the end of this play, watch what he does. Dave Thomas is there, the ball goes up there. Watch the concentration. Randy Moss still has not given up on this ball. Look at that. He doesn't get his feet caught. As he tips the ball in the air, he gets his feet caught a little, loses his balance, and tries to make the play. I'll tell you something else, too. Randall Cunningham does not make that throw to anybody else except Randy Moss. Cunningham, Major push Cunningham's only 7 of 16 in this game. Three-man rush. Cunningham with a lot of time. Leroy Horde underneath. He'll be stopped well shy of a first down. Gang tackled at the 35. You know, of all the games we've done this year, I'm not kidding. This first half, we've seen some terrific hits. Chris Hudson and Dave Thomas. There's the double on Randy Moss. Thomas makes him go inside. Hudson is there waiting for him. They just have taken him right out of the offense. And now Brian Billick has decided on fourth down and seven. You're a little too close to punt it. Why not go for it? A field goal try would be 52. And now Cunningham wants a timeout as the play clock was getting close to zero. 5.06 to go, first half. You're transmitting. Give me your... Minnesota hanging on to a 3-0 lead over Jacksonville in front of a sellout crowd here at the Metrodome. And now they have decided better of going for it on fourth and eight. Gary Anderson, who has already hit from 48 yards to extend his NFL record to 35 consecutive field goals, will try this one from 53. He hasn't had many cheapies in this string. Line drive, <laughs> got it! <laughs> Holy cow, what a season he has had! Internet wonder boy. What? Over here. Here. Over here. You think you got it all, don't you? Well, but there's a tiny little voice inside saying there's got to be something new, something that makes you want to stand. Three yarder, and he crushed this thing. It didn't get very high, but it got high enough, and it went about 60 yards. Like a one iron laser down the middle of the fairway. Gary's on and the special teams coach just loves it on the sideline. How far will they let him go next time? 48 and 53 so far. He has not missed an extra point or a field goal all year. Logan, three yards deep, they'll keep it there. <laughs> What a weapon both of these kickers are, Berger and Anderson. Look at this. 31 in a row this year, 53 straight extra points. Well, you know the thing about it, though, when you watch him kick, there's never any question about it. It's right down the middle of the goalpost. Well, the other thing is he talked about how wonderful it is to kick in a controlled environment like this, but you got to remember, last 
last week against Baltimore. He kicked six of them and set the record last week in some horrible conditions. And I don't care where you're kicking a 53-yarder from. Quinn to Smith. Eaten up at the 27-yard line as soon as he touched it by Hitchcock. Let me say one other thing about Anderson and, and kickers in general. When you have an excellent field goal kicker like this guy on any football team, you find the money to pay him to keep him. There, there are so many good kickers that have gone to other teams that have helped other teams. This guy should have been where he started. If he doesn't get a huge raise, nobody will. Second and three. Draw play to Taylor running hard across the 30 for a first down. Robert Griffith, the strong safety, made the stop. They're mixing it up a little bit with Jonathan Quinn. On that first and 10, you saw him in a shotgun. Then you come back with the two tights, you put it in, and you run the ball, you pick up the first down. Jacksonville has accomplished what they want. They're keeping this game close, waiting for an opportunity to take a shot on offense. And they've had lousy field position the entire game. Comes the blitz. Quinn floats it down the middle. It's intercepted. Threw it between two receivers in Orlando. Thomas got the second pick of the year. Damon Jones, number 88. The tight end stopped. He was going down the middle of the field and stopped. Right. Well, I think if he kept going, I don't think he could have got to this. This ball is so high. Orlando Thomas is right in the middle. You're going to see the pass go down here. He's just going to be able to pick it off right there. Play fake. What happens is Damon Jones is looking for it right off the line. He sees the blitz. It's supposed to be a hot. That's more on Jonathan Quinn missing the blitz than it is Damon Jones stopping. First turnover. Vikings at the Jacksonville 49. Smith. Room to run. Robert Smith, 22 yards. Boy, does he wait for his block. Stussy and McDaniel, the guys on the left-hand side. Robert Smith, watch when the hole opens up. He knows when to make the move. Watch the left-hand side. They're pulling out to the outside. The Christie is the center. He gets a block, and look at this. That hole is wide. And Randy Moss, we talk about what he can do as a receiver catches the ball, but here he is out front blocking. That's how you get big games. You get your receivers involved in the running game. The pair of 22-yard runs tonight for Robert Smith. Smith again. Got a great block from Moss, then tripped over the 20-yard line and goes down. Moss and Hardy are still on the ground. Moss threw a wicked block. Randy Moss earning his stripes as a blocker tonight. First he went after Dave Thomas. Okay, he's a defensive back. Now he steps it up a notch. There goes Randy. All right, I'm going to... Uh, Dion's there. Wham! Kevin hits him right in the head. You know, you look at this here. You see Christie, the center. He gets out. He really has no one to block because everybody else is down. Randy Moss takes two people on the play. From this angle, it looked like a better block than it was. He used his head. That's not the best weapon. And we've got a timeout called by Jacksonville with 2.21 to go first half. The Vikings driving. 21 to go in the half. Vikings up by two field goals. Well, the reason the Vikings called a timeout, they only had 10 guys on the, on the football field. Calvin Pritchett. His run is right there, but Calvin Pritchett didn't come out on the field, number 94. So Jacksonville calls the timeout. Did I say Minnesota? That's okay. Well, Jacksonville. You're allowed one. It's hard to play with this game. You know what I mean? On the other side. Mm -hmm. Smith on the delay. Helicopters inside the 15. You might say to yourself, now, why does a Robert Smith cut it up inside and do that? Why doesn't he try and go outside? Because he's a smart football player. He knows he only needs three yards for a first and ten. And we have reached the two-minute warning in Minnesota. Six-nothing bikes. Coming up on the Mercedes-Benz Halftime Report, Chris Berman with the fastest three minutes in television. Congratulations to the Falcons as they win the NFC West and will run down the NFL playoff picture. And also Dan Reeves, so we all send our best out to you. And 
speedy recovery. Red McCombs and Ahmad Rashad. Upstairs watching this one. A lot of the former Viking greats back to honor longtime trader Fred Zambrelletti. I think you got to figure out a way to get the ball to Chris Carter down in this area. You got to figure they're going to double Randy. Cunningham with the fade. Carter can't get it. He had Dave Thomas by a step. Jacksonville's done a nice job of getting up on the receiver, backing off, getting up, backing off. Chris Carter does get the sh outside shoulder. Randall has what he wants. He has press coverage. He has one-on-one. -on -one. Dave Thomas, the bigger and stronger of the corners. This one just goes through his hands. Watch this. Just through his outstretched hands. He's made so many of those catches, you almost expect them. It's a great throw. It's a great throw. Second and ten. Carter, the man in motion. The blitz, they pick it up. Cunningham over the middle. Touchdown, Andrew Glover. If they cover the big guys on the outside, you hit your tight end over the middle. Going to go for the two-point conversion. These guys like points. Well, you know, they have their eye on a record, which I hope they don't get to. Because it's yours. That's right. 541 points is what they're shooting for. At the average 61. Excuse me, 30, what, 31 per game. And they'll whistle this one dead. got their third and final timeout before the snap. They want to set their defense for this two-point conversion. You get so focused on the wide receivers here. There comes Chris Carter in motion. Randy Moss is split out to the left. Everybody gets tied up with the receivers. And all of a sudden, you wind up with Andrew Glover. Watch him right down the middle. He's just going to go right down the middle as the safety vacates. And this is what Randall Cunningham sees. Hudson goes out. He gets behind the linebacker. Without hesitation, you get the ball off quickly to your tight end in the middle. That is the problem that this offense presents. You can double Randy Moss. You can double Chris Carter. But what are you going to do with Andrew Glover? You know, he had 31 catches coming in, just three touchdowns. But they're all very critical. Brian Schwartz, the linebacker, number 58, was a guy trying to cover him short. And the key word there is trying, isn't it? Oh, trying. Here's the try for two. Cunningham on the roll, throws wide of Carter. Perfectly covered by Mike Logan. So the two-point conversion goes awry, and it's a 12-0 lead. ESPN's presentation of college basketball continues Tuesday night at 7 Eastern. We have the Jimmy V Classic in the first game. South Carolina against number eight, Purdue. Then at nine, a matchup of superpowers. Number two, Duke, and number four, Kentucky. I watched Kentucky last night. Yeah. <laughs> we watched it together. Yeah, it was like, what, 20? 21 to 2 at one point. At one point. I mean, it was amazing. I was through the first 10 minutes. I, I tell you, you know, I really enjoyed college basketball. With the NBA out on strike, I mean, it's, you know, college basketball is really getting its, its share of, of audience and enjoyment. There's some guys that were just let out for the weekend. Yeah. <laughs> uh, excuse me, the NBA is locked out. They're not working. Logan and Barlow are deep for Mitch Berger's kick. He's put them all in the end zone so far. Another bomb. And Jacksonville has been unable to start outside its own 20-yard line tonight. Seven drives. 
that's the best shape they've started in. Mike, one of the things that concerned me with the last timeout that Jacksonville took, they took that timeout after a touchdown had been scored to try and set up for the two-point conversion. I would have thought with a minute and 50-some seconds to go in the half, Tom Coughlin would have liked to have held on to one of his timeouts to try and mount some type of a scoring opportunity and stop the clock. Of course, Quinn had to one, use the one very early because of a mix-up on changing the play at the line. Taylor on the draw. And the Vikings swarm him after a gain of one. You know, Mike, you talk about Mitch Berger kicking the ball in the end zone every time he kicks off. If, you know, if you have an extra man that you want to take to the Pro Bowl, could you take him just to kick off? I know the entire yeah. NFC would love to have him. Well, he's also Gary's holder. Yeah. So, so he should go anywhere. Yeah. I mean, I'd Gary just, should know. take him. <laughs> Gary Anderson should take Mitch Burton. Yeah, but he's not going to dress, though. He can go. Well, Gary pays for it. I'm sure he doesn't care if he dresses. I mean, you know, what a valuable man that you have that can kick the ball in the end zone. We have an injury inside of two minutes by rule. That's a charge timeout, Minnesota, number three. Dwayne Rudd was the injured player. For up-to-date scores, stats, and analysis on all the NFL action, log on to ESPN.com and log on to NFL.com for the updated playoff picture and the AFC-NFC Pro Bowl squad. Nine from the Vikings, nine from the Denver Broncos. Another draw play to Taylor. Now you've got some room to operate out at the 34. Let's see if they try to do something a little more fancy. Well, the thing is, is you've got room to operate, but also you've got no timeouts to stop the clock. So you're really looking at, with the clock running and not getting out of bounds, maybe only four or five plays. Four-man rush. Quinn with the out. He's got 10 yards to Smith and out of bounds. On that last play, they ran that draw. They pulled Baselli and ran him up into the hole. And I'm going to tell you, he just opened that thing wide. It was unbel it's unbelievable watching this guy block. Baselli is just a magnificent athlete. They said when he came out of USC, he was ready to play in the NFL. They credit the coaches there who are doing a tremendous job for him. Keenan McCardell has been shut down in this game. Taylor on a draw. Tripped up by Alexander. Baselli again out in front of him. Clock running under a minute. Mike Hollis warming up on the sideline. If I'm a smart running back, I just grab onto the belt with Baselli and just follow him wherever it goes. Hollis with a great leg. He's kicked a 59-yarder in the preseason game. They need about another 15 to 20 yards to give him a shot. Quinn airs this one out. A lot of contact. That's going to be interference. The call on Ramos McDonald as he appeared to cut off Jimmy Smith. Well, he does appear to, he really does cut him off. Jimmy Smith is just running by him, and instead of turning and trying to run and make a play on the ball, he just cuts him off. That's interference. 34, defense. And that's a point of emphasis this year for the officials, the defensive backs not be allowed to cut off receivers. You see his angle? He goes right in front of him and doesn't look back. If he, if he slides himself over in front of him as he looks back, be a good defensive play. That's a 38-yard penalty. Jacksonville with no timeouts, remember. Quinn to run. Slides at the eight. Took a shoulder from Griffith and Ed McDaniel. Now Jonathan Quinn will just down the ball here. Did you see what Baselli did on that play when Quinn ran with the ball? He caved in the defensive line. I'm not talking about one guy. He just caved it in. Look to, to his right, to the inside. Watch this. There goes Baselli. Quinn. Clemens has no chance. Quinn sees a hole. He has to run. See, I think what you do here is I think you look for Pete Mitchell, the tight end. you got to figure they're going to double the wide receivers. Maybe you got a shot with your tight end. Third and four. 
flag is down. Quinn throws incomplete. 12 seconds to go in the half. Dwayne Rudd was putting the pressure on Quinn. Baselli indicating it's against the Vikings. Hands to the face. And with 12 seconds, you can still throw two more balls in the end zone. But the end zone's the key. You've got to throw it in there or the sideline. Exactly. Illegal hands to the face. Number 93, defense. First down. John Randall. There's John Randall right in the middle. You see that big right hand up on the face mask. Quinn throws incomplete at the goal line. Jimmy Smith up arguing he wanted a flag against Hitchcock. We're going to let you see it up close and personal. Is there Hitchcock? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I can understand why Jimmy Smith is mad because that time Hitchcock wrapped him up. And this should have been pass interference. The critical thing here is Jonathan Quinn cannot afford to take a sack. He's got to get rid of the football to save some time on the clock. Vikings got a break on the last play. And he does just what you said he couldn't do. Can't do it. He had to get the ball out. He had to. Now do they have enough time to spike it? What a heads-up play by Jacksonville. Because they know that when the quarterback is sacked, the clock stops until they set the ball. Boy, they got set in a hurry, too. Well, you know something? I don't know if that was a sack. He might not. That, that might. He might have got past the line of scrimmage. If he does that, it's not a sack. No, I don't think so. Okay. He didn't make it. This will be a 25-yard field goal attempt from Mike Howard. Just sneaked it inside the left upright. And Jacksonville gets on the board as time expires. At the end of the first half with the score, the Vikings 12, the Jaguars 3. Let's join Chris Berman for the Mercedes-Benz Halftime Report. Randall Cunningham to Andrew Glover. That's the lone touchdown of the game. They were 12-3 at the half. Back to the Angeles in a moment. 48 yards to help the Vikings take a 12-3 lead back with the second half in a moment. It's the oh. Welcome back to Minneapolis where the Vikings trying to win their 14th game and 15 starts have a 12-3 lead over the Jaguars, the Metrodome. I thought the Jaguars did a darn good job in the first half on Randy Moss. They managed to keep the ball away from him all but four times. And they, although he did manage to have a little bit of an impact. Here's the first one, doesn't concentrate on it, gets away. Randall Cunningham scrambling around. Davis knocks this one away from him. Does a nice job of coming back and making this reception. And the throw in the end zone towards the end of the half. He tries to make a play on, but just can't quite get it. Moss only thrown to four times. Had a drop. Caught one for 10 yards. That is the win for the Jaguars. It really, he is the spark plug of this offense. He said that, you know, they, coaches have said, this is the guy that makes this thing go. They've got to get him more involved somehow in the second half. Nick Jerron's defense done a, has have done a terrific job on the entire Minnesota offense. Mike Hollis will kick off as the Vikings will get the ball to start the second half. Low line drive kick taken by Tate on the bounce. Tate crosses the 30 to the 31 yard line. Kevin Devine made the tackle. 
take a look at the first half numbers. Only one turnover in the ball game. A Jacksonville fumble. Excuse me, they recovered that then through an interception. Neither team putting up much in the way of numbers. Total yards, 127 to 168. And the time of possession also very close. Cunningham wanted to go deep, then pulls it down. Now deep over the middle to Glover. To the Jacksonville 44. Gain of 26 yards. This is the same play they started the game with. He wants to go deep to Randy Moss. Little play action fake in the backfield. Thomas up on him. Manages to make him lose a little bit of the ground. He doesn't get the acceleration. Randall scrambles around. Andrew Glover does a nice job of staying alive and finding a hole in that defense. College teammate of Jake Reed, who should be back for the playoffs for the Minnesota Vikings. And get that trio back. Cunningham gets it back from Smith, throws for Moss, touchdown! The safety, Travis Davis, was on him and didn't have a chance. You know why the Jaguars didn't have a chance? Because they make, they stop in the secondary. It's a run up the middle. Now there's no chance whatsoever. The acceleration he has is incredible. Now watch him go after the ball. I mean, Randall Cunningham cannot out throw him. Dick Geron told me earlier today, he said, you know, I try and tell our safeties to play deep, but how do you know how deep, deep enough is with Randy Moss? Well, they found out. They're not there yet. Where he is right now may be deep enough in the stands. <laughs> That is the 10th touchdown catch for Randy Moss of more than 40 yards. He has just tied the legendary Elroy Hirsch, who said it in 1951. You know, I really like talking to Randall Cunningham, and, and we asked him the last time we were here, can you overthrow him? And he just smiled and said, no. Well, it was funny. Randy was sitting <laughs> with him. Yeah. And Randy, just I saw Randall throw the ball 80 yards in the quarterback competition. And, and Randy looked at him and he said, you can? When are you going to do that? Anderson for the point after. Still perfect on the year. Cunningham to Smith. Back to Cunningham to Moss. A 44-yard touchdown strike. Vikings extend their lead. Cunningham just broke a career high. His 31st touchdown pass of the year. Randy Moss got his 16th and is now 10 touchdown catches of 40 yards or better tying an NFL record. He will tie and break an awful lot more. Berger crushes another one. Barlow will bring it out from nine yards deep. There's a flag down as Barlow returned at 49 yards. Johnny Greer and his officials talking over the call. The preliminary indication was too many men on the field. And it's going to go against the Vikings. One of the things they're going to have, if they bring in replay, what the, one of the rules they should put in that no players should be near the officials. If they are, it'll be a five-yard penalty against your team. That will save about 25 seconds. Well, what do you consider near? Here's what we think happened on that play. The Viking players thought they were just going to take the ball down in the end zone. The defense started running on the field during the runback, so they had too many guys on the field. 
I mean, when you're nine yards deep in the end zone <laughs> and nobody's really making an effort to block, it's a pretty good indication that that might be the case. What a return by Barlow. And Tom Coughlin arguing his side of the case. You wonder how this can take that long. They were either on the field or they weren't. You know, just go to the guy who threw the flag. If he threw the flag and he can I mean, you know, the flag is up about the 33-yard line. Or, yeah, 33-yard line. Johnny will tell us. We have illegal substitution. Members of the kicking team coming on the field while the ball is still in play. First down. They simply thought it was going to be a touchback. Go back and take a look at that touchdown while we've got a minute here. Randy Moss is coming in motion. As he comes in motion, you're going to see the safety bite. He's going to come and make believe he blocks it and then takes off up the field. Hand off to Robert Smith. He hands it back to Randall Cunningham. As soon as the safety, as soon as Davis takes that false step forward, he's got no chance of catching Randy Moss. Jacksonville will start from the 44. Taylor hitting the backfield. He'll lose two. Go to Solomon Wilcox. Yeah, Mike, I talked to Jacksonville head coach Tom Bumpler at halftime. He says that he's very happy with the play of his rookie quarterback, Jonathan Quinn, says he showed a great deal of poise playing in a very hostile environment. He says here in the second half, they have to do a better job of running the ball to try to slow down the Vikings' blitzing defense. Mike? Awesome one, the second. All right, Solomon, and they got penetration against them that time. Second call at 11. Another blitz. Quinn wants the screen. Taylor with no blockers. Slips the tackle. Now picks up a block and gets it out to the 45-yard line. That's a good run by Fred Taylor to avoid another loss. They had, Minnesota had this thing read so perfectly. Tony Williams is going to come in and put pressure on him. And then the defensive linemen peel off. Watch the pressure come from the right side. Sprints out. Okay, here comes the pressure. Jerry Ball reads it. Okay, I got a shot. Now that's Tony Williams. He just makes him miss. Makes John Randall miss. Reggie Barlow is in as the wide receiver on third and nine. Quinn throws underneath to Barlow. Slips the tackle. That back to midfield. But short of a first down, Robert Griffith with the stop. This is a situation that you talked about in the first half where Jacksonville gets himself in third and long. It's something they cannot do. First of all, because of the noise, and then you have a rookie quarterback. And they're throwing, he's throwing, a, he's got third and ten and throws a six-yard pattern. And part of the problem, too, on third down, that's when coaches can throw multiple looks at you as well as multiple rush-type formations. Barker will punt to Palmer. High spiral that hits the five and is down near the one-yard line. Albus with it. Makes the play on special teams. A punt of 49 and no return. A sellout crowd seeing the Vikings have it their way. ESPN Sunday Night Football is brought to you by the United States Marine Corps, where the change is forever. By MasterCard, there are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's MasterCard. By Excite, Excite.com, where you go when you go online. And by Toyotathon, celebrating 20 years of incredible value. The report from the Viking training staff, Randall Cunningham has a fractured bone in his left or non-passing hand. And there is Leroy Horde plowing forward just shy of the ESPN first and ten line at the 12. We are told he did it in the first half, came out on out of the locker room with it wrapped. And the one thing you have to be conscious of is when the running back runs to the right, you usually hand off with your left hand. Watch what he does. He's actually handing off with his right hand to a running back running to the right. He's just totally protecting that left hand. And that could cause the fumble. Your hand gets between the ball and the running back. This will be a first down for Minnesota. Yeah, but if you watch, if you watch 
the running backs. There's Brad Johnson, but if you watch the running backs, they are making sure that they grab the ball out of his hand. They're giving him a big target to be able to get the ball in and, and give him a chance to uh, hand it off. Brad Johnson has just gotten to the point where he is able to play, listed as the second quarterback tonight. He had been hurt a couple of times this year. And speaking of injuries, Ronaldo Wynn is down on the field for Jacksonville. When I was talking to Brad Johnson during warm-ups, he said, you know something, I haven't had a uniform on for five and a half, six weeks. He says, it feels a little uncomfortable. I said, it looks a little loose. <laughs> <laughs> we'll check on the Jaguars defensive lineman in a moment. Ronaldo went on the sideline. He came off very, very slowly. The Jacksonville defensive tackle, the second year, first round draft choice out of Notre Dame. Comes the blitz on first and ten. Smith, nothing there. Let's go to Solomon Wilcox. Yeah, Mike, at halftime, I also talked to Vikings head coach Dennis Robert Green. Smith. He said that the Jacksonville defense is paying so much attention to Randy Moss that they're leaving seven men in the box and it lends itself to more success in the running game. Robert Smith in the first half had two runs of 22 yards. Here in the second half, he said he wanted to start to at least set the tempo with the big play, and he uses the long touchdown pass to Randy Moss as exhibit A. Mike? Second Solomon, eight. he's gained 75 yards so far in this game, and nine straight running backs have had 100 yards against the Jacksonville defense this year. Against the blitz, Cunningham unloads for Moss. Nice coverage by Deion Figures. You know what? You know what that it's like when Randall Cunningham throws the ball to Randy Moss. It's like watching Michael Jordan go up and shoot a jumper. You almost expect it to go in. In this case, you expect him to catch it. Here he is taking the snap. I mean, the snap evidently doesn't bother him because your top hand is your right hand, and that's where all the pressure and the pop comes from. And now he just tries to launch it. Randy does a job, keeps an eye on the ball, tries to make a play on it, can't quite get to it. Excellent coverage by figures. Cunningham again, this time from Moss, and Moss covered perfectly by Kevin Devine and then spun down after the play. That ball was a little high. Kevin Devine, number 26, on Randy Moss, number 84. Watch what he does. Here's Moss. He tries to go side, grabs it, hits him in the face mask. They could have called face mask there. That ball was too high. Then he grabs him by the face mask again and, and throws, throws him down. Yeah, throws him down. Kevin Devine needs every trick in the book. He's 5'9 <laughs> against 6'4 Randy Moss. Reggie Barlow drops deep back at his 37-yard line. Trying to get to the picket line. Flag is down and the legal block in the back will cost the Jaguars on this return. The tackle made by or the block by Chris Hudson as he was trying to give Barlow support at the sideline. They could call Hudson or Will Moore, either one of them, because they both blocked the guy in the back. The legal block in the back, number 81, during the return. That's Will Moore. And Jacksonville will start deep in its own territory again. Our overhead shots provided by the Southwest Airlines Aerial Cam, high above the Metrodome for ESPN's Sunday Night Football. Jacksonville takes over at its own 27-yard line, down 19-3. Now the pressure squarely on rookie Jonathan Quinn. Throws low and complete after the 35 down lead, incomplete intended for Alvis Witted. John Randall plays in two very specific positions on the defensive line. One inside, one outside. On our ESPN free play, give you an idea what he's thinking about. There he is lined up over the guard inside at the defensive tackle position. He likes it there because it's the shortest distance to the quarterback. Plus he gets to use his hands very quickly. Now he moves outside. You got to go to contain. He's up against the best lineman. And also, people come over and try and help out on it. Quinn tries to throw it in the flat for Zach Crockett, who's starting for the injured Damon Shelton. He's lined up in a few different places this evening. John Randall, tackle slash end. 
There he is on the outside, 13 times. The right inside tackle, 20 times. Three times over on the other side. You see, he usually plays on the quarterback's left side. Third and long, Quinn has only hit 11 out of 22 tonight for 87 yards. Blitz coming. Quinn throws too high for Smith. Oh, they're bringing it to the rookie. They're not only bringing it, but they're laying some lumber on him. Here is a young guy who really stands tall and tough in the pocket. This is just a flush shot right square at him. Ed McDaniel, watch up top. He's the middle linebacker coming around, and he just absolutely tattoos him. Hard to bring down the tree. <laughs> He's a young oak. Parker to punt to Palmer. Wow. Blasts it. Palmer all the way back to his 13. And swarmed under at the 18-yard line. A 58-yard punt. Travis Davis, the first man downfield. The Vikings lead by 16. Bitterly cold tonight. Yeah, but we're inside. Thank goodness. I may not leave until April. 19-3 Vikings. They have the ball at their own 17-yard line. Robert Smith lowers his head and plows across the 20. When we were away, the offensive line on the sideline, Cersei and New Year, in a rather heated discussion. What they're trying to figure out is how they're going to pick up the stunts when the Vikings do it. I, mean, I don't think they've solved the problem. It doesn't look like you're solving the problem yet. Comes the blitz. Cunningham unloads. Come on. First down at the 41. Dave Thomas made the tackle. It's a gain of 19. This is where Randy Moss, I think, has an incredible skill. And that is, he has the timing to be able to see the ball in the air, stop and make a play on it. Dave Thomas has good position. He's got real good position, but Randy Moss is looking back at the ball. Bryce Pop, we haven't even mentioned his name tonight. There's a reason. Look at him. He's down the line, and watch what Christie does. And again, they just bury him right at the line of scrimmage. He hasn't, even, he hasn't made a tackle. Vikings pick up the blitz. Evans in the flat. Chased out of bounds near midfield by Brian Schwartz, the middle linebacker. Bryce Pop came in as nearly a $22 million player for a five-year contract from Buffalo. The 95 defensive player of the year for the Bills. He's a much, I think he's a much better player around the line of scrimmage. He's a big guy at 6'5", 245, 248, you see. And for him to operate in space, it's not his strong suit. They need to rush him more. Smith. Into Jacksonville territory. Near the 48-yard line. It's a first down for the Vikings. How important a fullback is Charles Evans. He reads the blitz, number 29. His job is to step up into the, into the hole. Kevin Hardy, number 51, comes in. He just takes him out. Watch this block. Move him to the outside. Let Smith run inside. 6.42 and counting in the third quarter. Cunningham to throw, plenty of time. Nice catch by Leroy Horde. Oh! Leroy Horde is destroyed by Fernando Smith, the former Viking. <laughs> well, Ouch, Smith, holy. Smith, Ouch. Smith, was, Smith was on a rush, and then he sees Leroy Horde catch the ball. Now, Leroy's looking downfield, so he's not even looking for Smith. He comes back down and makes a tackle. Leroy Horde, when he catches the ball, watch this. He's gonna, he, doesn't, he never sees him, right? about now goodbye <laughs> second and seven 
miss on the draw. Nice block by Evans. First down and more. Smith forced out inside the 30. Oh, man. Charles Evans again. The fullback. Every time we've talked to running backs about fullbacks, he says, just, I want to follow up my fullback. Wherever he goes, I'm going, because I have to believe in what he does. Randy Moss twisted his ankle to play before this last one as he limped off. Now he's in the pitch getting a little tire work. He's trying to make the move. Carter and Hatchett now the wide receivers. Cunningham tries to go to the corner to Carter and Bandley overthrew him that time. Moss coming back in along with Leroy Horde. You know, that was the one thing that I wondered about Randy Moss. He's gone through the season quite healthy. And you just wonder how a young man's going to react when he gets nicked. Now, how's he going to handle his sore ankle? What's the rehabilitation going to be like? What's the treatment going to be like? Obviously, for him, he just wants to be on the field. Cunningham has it at the sideline. He got it. It's a first down at the Jacksonville 18. He could have gone either side. He could have gone to Moss. Moss was wide open on the right-hand side. Hatchet's wide open on the left-hand side. So he has choices. And when you have choices, you complete passes. Here's Hatchet. Look at how far off they are. When you play with Dave Thomas plays that far off, you have to throw the ball out there. And watch Randy Moss on this side, Joe. Figures just lets him go outside. I mean, he's all by himself. And he's nursing that ankle, too. That is not 100%. Smith and Evans are the backs. Robert Smith has just hit the 100-yard mark for this game. And Cunningham, it just looks so odd to watch him hand it off with his right hand. Michael, not only is it odd, it is extremely difficult to be that sure with your handoffs when you're handing the ball off with the hand closest to the running back. I mean, you could hit his elbow. You could do so many things bad could happen. Watch this. He's going to hand off with the closest hand, and then he just rolls it into Robert Smith. It puts an onus on the running backs to really make sure, as Paul said earlier, make sure they get the ball. Vikings up by 16, bidding for more. No pressure on Cunningham, throws to the end zone. Carter can't get it. The crowd wanted a flag. It looked like Dave Thomas may have had a piece of the jersey. The, flag, the, the fans want a flag on every play. Randall Cunningham trying to get the ball to Chris Carter outside. Does a nice move outside, comes across inside, and yeah, Dave Thomas just flat grabs him. Hey, one thing I've noticed is in the last couple, three weeks, I have noticed that there haven't been as many pass interference calls in the National Football League. They're letting them play a little bit more out there. The Vikings will take a timeout. If they can clinch home field advantage tonight, Cunningham conceivably could be rested next week, then the off week that they get, and would have time to heal that left hand. And no team that has ever played in a dome has ever clinched home field advantage. I think that is just coincidental with talent. I do too. I, I, because when you look at this Minnesota Viking team, they only play in the dome. They practice outside all week. They get ready to operate go and play i mean they've won 13 games both in and out of the dome total well they won at lambeau so when you went up there you can win anywhere the key word and the yardage the jaguars have not showed up offensively in the second half and the key word talent <laughs> you have talent i don't care where you play and this team has talent mark brunell who i, I was talking to on the field during warm-ups he's going to try and play a little bit next week he said he, that's his target, but he says, I'm not sure whether I want to rush myself before the playoffs. I personally think he shouldn't play until the playoffs. And you'll see a different offense with him in there. He is sensational. The blitz, they pick it up again. Cunningham over the middle. Glover. Oh, it. Oh. Wow. What an effort. 
Johnson. What a catch. Andrew Glover with his second touchdown grab of the night. You know, and you sit there and you watch this offensive line. Three of them are going to the Pro Bowl. Susan, McDaniel, and Christie. But the time that Cunningham has to look around and throw, and but that time he threw up, and I think four guys were covering. He got Glover, and he still caught it. You know, they wind up covering outside, and you just can't protect down the middle. Gary Anderson for the point after. Andrew Glover lines up in the same position he did before. There he is. There's Glover. Here's the receivers. Look, everybody's concerned with the receivers. Glover's going down the middle. This time Schwartz, or excuse me, this time Kevin Hardy does a good job on him. He's right with him. Look at the confidence that Randall Cunningham has after it looks like it ricochets off of Hardy's helmet. Watch this. A little ricochet job. You know, you know, as I look at Randall, he's got all the time in the world to throw the football. And what does he do? He throws it to the guy that's really most covered the most. <laughs> and he still gets a touchdown. Randall Cunningham with his career-high 30-second touchdown pass. And I guess when you've got receivers like that, you throw it no matter what. That is the biggest thing, Mike. You make a great point there. I remember watching Dan Faust with that group that he had. He'd make throws when everybody thought that the guys were covered, and they just continued to make play after play. I see the same thing in this Viking offense. This offense is on another NFL record pace in the last two years. They have just racked up point after point. Uh, I mean, they need to beat your record? I'm <laughs> I hope there are many. <laughs> Don't say that. You're only 36 away. Yeah, you've been begging every week. Yeah. Yeah, I, I told Brian if he got the 540, that'd be a great accomplishment. Logan and Barlow are deep. It's a 26-3 game. Every one of Berger's kicks have been into the end zone. Mike Logan hammered as he got back to the 20. ESPN Sunday Night Football continues next week with one of the NFL's great rivalries. The Washington Redskins head to Big D to take on Troy Aikman and the Dallas Cowboys. Join Joe Theismann, Paul McGuire, and me right after primetime at 8.15 Eastern. ESPN and ABC, your exclusive network for primetime NFL football. Draw play to Taylor. That Dallas game next week? Yeah. Watching Troy Aikman, the beating he's been taking the last year. I don't think he can get out of bed till like Wednesday. I'm telling you, he has been a world. The other thing that's been impressive is the job that Norv Turner's football team has done the last half of the season. And I've been really impressed with the way Trent Green has just developed as a quarterback, but also gotten this thing as a spark, some mobility, and moving around a lot. They're really one of the hottest teams in the NFL right now after that awful start. Another draw play to Taylor. John Randall chased him down from behind and made the tackle up at the 27. Boy, John Randall, you know you, you know why this guy is a pro bowler. I mean, he gives you 100% all the time. Watch this. Now he's on Baselli. Spins inside. He sees the draw coming. Gets away from Baselli. Goes down the line of scrimmage and makes the tackle. Third and three for Jacksonville. Quinn floats it down the sideline in perfect coverage as they tried to get it to McCardell. Fuller blanketed it. You know, we're watching Jonathan Quinn struggle, and we were talking to Tom Coughlin yesterday, and he just said, you know, I've been trying to build up his confidence all week. He said, he, he came in one time and he sneezed. He said, you know, that's a great sneeze. Beautiful, perfect. Oh, great Good looking sneeze. Then he sneezed again. He said, boy, that one was even better than the first one. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. What do you do? Uh, they like this kid's talent, but what a terrible spot for him to start a ball game against the Minnesota Vikings. Palmer. Wrapped up as he got to the 32-yard line by Chris Howard to return to five after a punt of 45. 
Coming up next, Sports Center with Kenny Main and Dan Patrick. The NFL playoff picture was at Reggie's last stand in Green Bay. And our conversation with Bobby Knight. All followed by NFL primetime. Brad Johnson is in at quarterback for the Vikings. Cunningham threw three touchdown passes, 17 out of 30 for 210. Johnson throws to Carter. Dives out to the 44-yard line. Deion figures with the tackle. Quite often, you take your starter out of the game and the other guy goes in. Well, the other guy just happened to be a starter before Randall went in. And I was watching him throw earlier. He hasn't had to change his motion much with the sore thumb. He's got the velocity back. He just wanted to get back and get in a game. And I think this is going to serve them well through the playoffs. Started the season with a broken leg bone, then came back. Had a fractured thumb after that. You know, you, know, you would think... Randall Cunningham is that 16 to 30, 210, three touchdowns. But you would think that you know, a quarterback comes in, hadn't played for a long time. Let's just hand the ball off. Uh -uh. Not with these receivers, because I'm throwing. You know, that's one thing I like about the way Brian Billick calls an offense. He just feels like his parts are interchangeable. He's going to call stuff, and he expects his guys to execute, and they've done it. Leroy Horde, the running back on second and eight. comes the blitz. They go to the screen. Horde blockers in front. Leroy Horde. First down to the Jacksonville 36. A gain of 17. What a nice call against the blitz. We talked about it in the first half. Randy Moss releasing outside, creating an opportunity for Chris Carter to make a catch. Now on this one, they run motion behind him. He runs off the slot. Look at the defenders not even looking back. They throw the screen right behind where Randy Moss vacated. It allows the lineman to get out front, pick up some blocks, pick up some yards. What a luxury for Brian Billick and the Vikings offense to have Brad Johnson along with Randall Cunningham. Another blitz, Leroy Hoard. He wasn't tripped up, might have gotten another 10 out of that one. The Vikings in control of this ball game, trying to wrap up home field advantage all the way through the playoffs. That's the end of the third quarter. Minnesota rolling. Players and what they do on the field. Tonight it's a great player and something he has done off the field. You will never meet anybody who loves the game of football and loves to play like Chris Fieldman. But he is taking this year off to help his wife, Stephanie, through treatment for breast cancer. It is one of the most unselfish and loving acts that I can remember in professional football. We wish them a wonderful trip. Well, one thing about Chris Spielman, I am from Buffalo, and, and, and Chris Spielman, there's two things he loves, and it's his family and football. Now, in football season, he loves football, and in the offseason, he loves his family. They come <laughs> second. But this young man, when he did this, everyone knew why he did it. Johnson on the run to Horde. Kevin Hardy will bring him down, and there's a flag down as well. Now, this is going to be a 15-yarder, too. This will probably be a 15-yarder because the tackle was caused by the pulling of the face mask. Personal foul, face mask, number 51, defense. You would have to say Jacksonville's defense has really acquitted itself quite well tonight. They have. I mean, they're really trying to stay in this game against all these weapons with very little help from the offense. There, Kevin Hardy just really doesn't isn't in good position, winds up reaching out with the, and grabbing the face mask. And there's a great example of why that's a, that is a 15-yard penalty. It could be, should be more because when you turn the, the player's the neck around, that's when they call it 15 yards because once you grab it, you know you have it. You can get rid of it. You've just become like Mr. Commissioner tonight. You don't want anybody around the, the referees. Well, I don't want them around the referees when you make it a call. Draw a play to Horde. Spins inside the 10 to about the 8. 
the Vikings almost to their average of 393 yards in total offense a game. We talked about the interchangeable parts of Brian Billick's offense. You've got Brad Johnson coming in. Now Leroy Horde fills in for Robert Smith. Joe, here comes another Pro Bowler, Randall McDaniel, number 64. Watch this block. I mean, there is a little bit of holding in there at one white, but... Just, hey. Wait, wait a minute now. Yeah. If you don't get called it's for it, it's holding. not holding. Exactly. Horde again. Leroy Horde inside the five to the three. Well, after that last comment, now I know how you fill out your income tax form. <laughs> Randall McDaniel, number 64, the left guard. There he is right there. Another key block. He just is owning the inside there. Big block inside on White. Just stands him up, drives him off the ball, going to his 10th consecutive Pro Bowl as the starter. And, and if he starts, it will be a record. Johnson. Trying to run it in. To the goal line, the down short. Brad Johnson really upset about the call. There's a flag down in the end zone as well. And I'll bet Denny Green's heart went up in his throat when he saw his often injured quarterback take off. He wanted to go to Chris Carter, and the reason why he couldn't get to Chris Carter is because Chris was being held at the line of scrimmage. Brad Johnson really wanted Holding that touchdown. 41. Defense. First down. Now Dave Thomas. You know, Johnson really he's looking at Carter. Watch this. Look at look at Thomas. Now, you know, you can't put your hands and grab the guy. They call this right up. There is a chuck within five yards. You're allowed to, but you're not allowed to grab onto the player. And that's what Thomas did. And that was a good call by the official. Brad Johnson's knee did hit the ground before. He got to the goal line. What's this guy doing running? <laughs> going away. First and goal. Johnson wants to throw for it. Carter incomplete, covered by Thomas. <laughs> Look at Dave Thomas got in his face and Chris Carter smiled at him. Just yell at me all you want. But I'm going to, eventually I'm going to beat you. Chris Carter on Dave Thomas. Now this was outstanding coverage here. Dave Thomas gets his hand, boom, gets his hand in, knocks the ball away, now what? Randall, excuse me, Brad Johnson going back, throws the ball back behind Chris Carter trying to make the play. When Thomas is just telling him what a good play that was. He, you know, <laughs> last night he told us he wants to go one-on-one. -on -one. He's done a good job tonight, too. Johnson to throw again over the middle, Carter, touchdown, he beat Thompson. And now they're going to go after each other. The 100th touchdown catch of his brilliant career for Chris Carter. He's among the best ever to play the game and has just tied Jerry Wright. What does he do? Somebody remind me what Chris Carter just does. Just catches touchdown. Oh, that's all. That's what I thought. This is a terrific throw, too, by the way. Chris says, I'm keeping the ball. You don't mind if I keep the ball, do you? I think I'll just take it with me. <laughs> he threw it to him three times. He wanted him to trying. get the touchdown. <laughs> he was going to assure him he's going to get 100 touchdowns. Had to be a great feeling for Chris Carter and for Brad Johnson trying to work his way back into action. And Mr. Automatic Gary Anderson converts again. And the Vikings just laying it on the Jaguars. Brad Johnson to Chris Carter for the 100th touchdown test of his career. Our cheese. Monday Night Football is brought to you by Sun Microsystems. Look into network computing from Sun. By Saturn, a different kind of company, a different kind of car. By AC Delco, if you're not asking for it, you're asking for it. By Service Merchandise, discover the new merchandise. And by Sony PlayStation, live in your world, play in ours. The Vikings are playing in their own little world here at home. 
they are hammering a very good Jacksonville football team that comes in without its star quarterback, Mark Brunel, 33-3. Chris Carter, as the records continue to fall in his wake, his wife, Melanie, get that sign ready. All he does is catch 100 touchdowns. <laughs> 1 0 0 and counting. Taylor on the draw, room to run finally across the 40 to the 43. This kid under publicized, just a tremendous rookie running back. If it weren't for Randy Moss, he would be rookie of the year. And here, most TD receptions in NFL history Rice at 163, Carter and Largent now tied at 100 he passed don hudson with the last catch i mean jerry rice at 163 yeah, that's, something. that's phenomenal we got one more today oh just unbelievable randy moss may be the guy who will shatter all the records before he's done it was interesting talking to foge fazio the defensive coordinator of the minnesota vikings on friday he said you know our statistics belie how good we really are. The offense runs up such a big number. He said, we tend to lose our focus a little bit in the fourth quarter, and people gain a lot of yards and have a lot of completions. He said, That's got, we really have to concentrate more in the fourth quarter. Looks like they're doing it now. Another draw to Taylor across midfield. If you're thinking, why doesn't Jacksonville go to another quarterback? Well, there is Will Fuhrer, who was the backup. He just signed this week. His sixth team in six years. Will Fuhrer is only going to have a handful of plays he can run. Plus, he didn't get any reps in practice because they had to give them all to Quinn. If Fuhrer should come in and something would happen to him, Keenan McCardell, the wide receiver, is the third quarterback. Randall from behind, and it's recovered by the Vikings. Jason Fisk with a fumble recovery. John Randall knocked it away. And he beat Tony Baselli. John Randall comes all the way around Baselli. And he, to talk about speed, determination. This is John Randall. He gets outside of Baselli in his quickness and his speed, gets to the quarterback. Quinn has no chance. I got to tell you, though, Quinn's got to either step up in the pocket or get rid of the football. He held it too long. You're asking Tony Paselli to do the impossible. As a quarterback, and I realize he's young, but as a quarterback, you've got to help your linemen out. You've got to get back, make a look, make a decision, and get rid of the ball. Miami is the goal for this ball club. Charles Evans with a rare carry as they work on the clock. It's down to 10 25 to go. Well, the Jacksonville Jaguars got it won their division today. I tell you, if they don't Brunel, if they don't have Brunel, they don't go anywhere. But they will. I mean, I, I, they I don't go anywhere. I agree with you. I, I obviously, but I, I think Brunel will be back. And they will be a very, very tough team in the playoffs. Johnson to throw. Under pressure. Steps out of it. And then goes head first down Look. to the 35-yard line. He's just downright ugly trying to figure out how to slide. I mean... <laughs> it was a close first half, and then Minnesota has just laid it on. 218 to 37 total yards. Jacksonville's only had the ball a shade over four minutes and have one first down up, and a half. And then Michael, up until that last drive, they had three other drives, Jacksonville. Two... Three three and outs for a total of 13 yards. This will be a valuable learning experience for Quinn, but it's going to be pretty tough to tell him that at this point. Leroy Hoare. He runs as hard as anybody in the NFL. You know when they talk about Leroy Hoare, you talk about a guy that gives you 100%, but you watch his legs. His legs never, never stop. 
Don't look at the ball. Don't look at his upper body. Don't even look at the blocking. Just all you want to do is look at his legs. This is why he gains the yards that he does. Watch his legs. They never stop moving. Back in 94, he was the AFC starting fullback in the Pro Bowl. Gained almost 500 yards rushing this year. This time he's hit in the backfield by Yurkovich and brought down. I don't, I don't think he was expecting to get hit that soon. I don't think he expected him to be there that quick. You're absolutely right. John Yurkovich. Actually, they, they really, uh, as defensive linemen get hurt, this one's Eric Curry. And they have had a lot of injuries in the last two years along that D-line. It's the ultimate New Year's Eve park. 33 to 3 and driving again. Brad Johnson in for Randall Cunningham. Quarterback draw. There's a marker down. There was movement at the snap. Everett Lindsay, number 61, playing the right tackle. Chris Carter, but they could have called it on Lindsey also because he was moving. Brad Johnson must feel that he's had his share of injuries for his career. He's used up his allotment because he is running with abandon. You know, the good thing about it, he doesn't, it doesn't bother him. It doesn't bother him the fact that he has been injured. He feels like he's healthy enough now to just be able to go out and compete and not worry about anything. Johnson with time, throws back just off Chris Palmer's hands. The only guy out there to stop it was Eddie Mason, uh, David Palmer. Mason was a step behind him. Curry being tended to on the sideline. Wins earlier injury, a strain left groin. Seven minutes, 54 seconds to go in the game. The Vikings going for that NFL point record. Set by Joe Theismann's Washington Redskins. Johnson down the middle, Glover hit just before he went up for the ball. That's just the difference in quarterbacks. We saw Randall Cunningham throw the ball a little bit more right at Andrew Glover. Now Brad Johnson comes in and he leads him a little bit inside. Watch this. Again, down the middle. Now Brad Johnson is throwing it a little bit more inside where I would have believed that Randall Cunningham would have thrown it sort of at the back of his head. That's one of the adjustments that the receivers have to make when you switch quarterbacks. Gary Anderson, who has been perfect all year. He's hit from 48 to 53 tonight. This is 44. <laughs> down the middle. He could knock it through the size of a hat box if he had to. <laughs> Mr. Perfect has done it again. Range field goal to extend his NFL record. Next week, he'll be kicking outside, not in the dome. They'll be playing in Nashville. 37 straight field goals. A new NFL record for Gary Anderson. He's kicked nine in the last two weeks. And Berger with another crushing kickoff. Barlow, eight yards deep this time. Take it out again. That was not a very good idea. Joe, they have a message for you. Yeah, I get it. You know, the thing is, though, is I think back to our 83 ball club that set that record of 541 points. You know, nobody's talked about that since that time. If you don't go on and win the Super Bowl, it becomes an oh-by-the-way record. If they can go on and win it, then they will have done something very special. They're only 25 points short of tying that 541 number. They can stop any time now. <laughs> <laughs> don't count on it. Anytime. They haven't stopped all year. Zach Crockett is the single setback behind Jonathan Quinn. Quinn under pressure. It's picked off. They might get the record 18. in this game. Let me just say this. The offense stopped. 
Garrett Alexander was putting the pressure on Quinn. You see the look of frustration on Tom Coughlin's face. This is what happens when you have a young quarterback. You think of the struggles that a Peyton Manning and a Ryan Leaf have gone through. It's not going to be any different for a Jonathan Quinn. He steps up, just gets his timing off a little bit. Damon Jones doesn't have a chance to make a play, even though he's open. And Jimmy Hitchcock takes it in. What was a very close first half has become a blowout. 43 to 3. It's been a struggle for Jonathan Quinn to for that Viking offense business as usual. The Minnesota Vikings will have dome field advantage. They are rocking the Jaguars 43 to 3. Reggie Barlow might as well stand in the end zone and wait for it. All of them have gone in there. Guess what? This one's almost to St. Paul. Barlow will bring it out again. And got it back near the 20 where he's driven out of bounds and he's hurt. And there's a flag now. Matthew Hatchett made the tackle on special teams. Well, there's no reason to bring this thing out because they're not getting it past the 20 anyway. Pete Mitchell, the tight end. The Vikings offense has certainly grabbed the holiday spirit since Thanksgiving. <laughs> 46 against the Cowboys, 48 against the Bears, 38 against Baltimore, 43 against Jacksonville. So far. And ho, ho, ho. 175 points in four games, the most any team has scored since the merger in 1970. Draw play to Fred Taylor. That has been the one effective play. This one is fumbled. Picked up by Bobby Houston. He nearly got it back in the end zone, and he did. And now an official will overrule the other one and say he's down outside the goal line. Don't, I know you're counting the numbers. <laughs> yeah. It's 11. I know, Paul. Uh, I know. You just 11. keep reminding me of these. One official said he was down. Another said touchdown. I think they're going to spot it inside the two. Well, and I know... I know Tom Coughlin is doing the right thing. What he wanted to do is just, let's, let's run this clock out. Let's get out of here. We have seven minutes. And then you get a fumble. Fred Taylor, here he goes up into the hole. The ball gets stripped out by Jason Fisk, number 72. Bobby Houston picks it up. No, he doesn't score. He's down. But, I mean, I thought, you know, the calls are right. Let's, Coughlin says, yeah. team, let's get out of here. Let's, let me protect the kid. Let's run the clock. Let's go play some defense and, and move on. But but the wheels have come off. Yeah. Well, then they're within 11. Sure. Fred Taylor Not on the that. sideline. That's a, that's a tough break for him. He's had a good ball game. The Vikings set to score again. Harold Morrow, number 33, comes in as the new running back. Brad Johnson with a play clock winding down has to take a timeout on first and goal. Our presentation of college basketball continues Tuesday night at the Jimmy B Classic starting at 7 Eastern. The first game has South Carolina against Gene Cady's Boilermakers. Then at 9, a matchup of superpowers. Number 2, Duke. Number 4, Kentucky. Two terrific ball clubs in a great event, the Jimmy B Classic. Not too many people have left here they are enjoying this too much well this is a classic example of how important a quarterback is to a football team yes it really is. no i mean if you look around the league if you just take a look at the teams that have enjoyed success they've had stability at the quarterback position even though there's been a change like in buffalo or say the jets but then you look at the teams that have really struggled and and you see the results young quarterbacks some teams have committed themselves to them not been able to win football games Charles Evans has come back in. He is the single setback. 
Evans gets the carry, dives toward the goal line. Touchdown. Ouch. Evans with his first rushing touchdown of the year. And this is just a straight handoff. And he goes up over the top. The offensive line blocking very well. Look at Evans stretches. No question about it. Touchdown. Anderson can make it 50. You know what? I wonder. Still up. When was the last time a first place team with 10 wins lost by 47 points? I can't remember. Anderson, perfect still, and it is 50 to 3. When they didn't have their starting quarterback or their second team quarterback. Well, now they're within 11. Thank you very That's much. Touchdown in the field goal. Appreciate you it. wouldn't want to bet they'll get 11 next week, would you? Touchdown in the field goal. I don't think they'll have tonight. To, well, I'm just going to say, you almost got seven minutes to go here. Jacksonville's run two offensive plays. One's an interception for a touchdown. The other's a fumble run back all the way to the one-yard line. It's not that Jacksonville isn't trying to get out of this thing alive. All they can do is bide their time and wait for Brunel to heal. I still think it would be smart for Mark Brunel not to play next week. He, does, he, he knows what game conditions are like. It's going to be more paramount that he is healthy for the first round of the playoffs than it is to just get him a little bit of work next week. Logan and Barlow drop deep again. Can't say enough about Berger and Anderson. I mean, this team has everything. All those offensive weapons, two great kickers, and a defense that plays as well from ahead as anybody. They really attack you. Goodbye. Barlow this time will take a knee. He's just tired. Here is the AFC playoff picture updated through this game, giving Minnesota a win. Denver now 13 and 1. Of course, they will win their division. The Jets 11 and 4. They take the AFC East. A division win for the Jets for the first time since 1969. The Jaguars already won it when Tennessee lost today. Jacksonville, we are told, will be the host of a wild card game in two weeks as Pete Bursich makes a tackle. Their chance of getting a first-round bye is gone, and the Jets have the first-round bye. Paul McGuire for lieutenant governor. And How about that? Well, he would be the second. We have governor body, and, and Paul would be governor, lieutenant governor body, too. Hmm. You like that ring, don't you? Well, you know the most impressive thing about that sign? They spelled my name right. <laughs> Always the most important thing. Before this drive, Jacksonville had had three consecutive plays, fumble, interception, and fumble, and the Vikings made them pay for all of them. And don't anybody question what Tom Coughlin, the coach, oh. is doing. And, and that's just trying to get out of here alive. Well, we, you know, this is not only, not only is it a loud like us, crowd, well, not only is it a loud crowd, it's a very intelligent crowd. <laughs> and I like that. <laughs> well, they didn't spell your name right on that one. Well, that's okay. I got one of them who's right. Quinn slides in safely at the 31-yard line. So often, I think people look at, at, for example, the Minnesota Vikings defensively, and they say, well, wh why don't you get your starters out of there? The fact of the matter is you dress barely enough guys to play, and the way Coach Fazio likes to work his defensive line, he rotates all seven guys through, so it doesn't really matter. There isn't such a thing as resting people at this level. You just have to let them play. Taylor got a great first. McCardell gave him a block downfield, and Taylor rolls to the 48-yard line. 
Antonio Banks makes the tackle. Whoops. That was the one that Paul made. <laughs> All right, talking about Fred Taylor, the burst that he has. He makes a, a great cutback. He's running to his right. The hole is there. Now watch him see to his left, get back. Actually, the defenders turned him back to the left. And then an outstanding tackle by Antonio Banks, number 30. 20 carries, 91 yards for Taylor. He's over the 1,100-yard mark for the year. A Jacksonville club record. Now here's the bomb and a flag as Smith interfered with again by Antonio Banks. The two big plays Jimmy Smith has had tonight have both been drawing interference calls. Smith going to the Pro Bowl as a starter. Pass interference, number 30, defense, first down. Again, it's the same call that we saw earlier on Ramos McDonald. They're going to say that Banks just cuts him off. Now, he, I don't, you know, I, he's not even catching up to him to cut him off. He just puts that left hand in there and looks back for the ball. To me, it looked a little bit more like incidental contact. Taylor behind Baselli cuts it back in inside the 10. The worst defeat Jacksonville has ever suffered, 44-0 against Detroit in its first season as an expansion club. Right now, they're down by 47 here. This just speaks to the fact that you have guys who are starters and you have guys that are not. And when you don't have your starters on the field, I mean, to, you know, tonight they're, of course, without um, Brunel, and you just can't operate your football team that efficiently. Quinn on a roll. Throws to the end zone. Jimmy Smith can't hold it. But you know, Joe, when you talk to coaches, and they'll tell you offensively and defensively, and they're not talking about guys who hurt. What we're doing, we're trying to do is put our best 11 players on the field. Now, after saying that, Jonathan Quinn fits in to that description. Even though he's a rookie, first starter, he's the best quarterback that he has right now. And here's the, the throw to Jimmy Smith. He doesn't make the catch too far to the outside. But that's, what, that's where they're at. That was their best 11. Jamie Martin was the backup, but he injured a knee a week ago and went on IR. That's why Quinn... The third string quarterback became the starter. Quinn still looking. Now he runs. Ooh, dives. Got to the one very close to a first down. That's quite an effort by the young man. I like the way the kid competes. I mean, he really competes. He's been getting banged around. The ball's been flying all over the place. It doesn't matter. Here he's looking, 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 looking. Now, Corey Fuller's going to come up and make a play. He gives him a good shot in the stomach. It doesn't matter. Bounces right up. Last summer, before he became a pro, he was hauling freight for a freight company to support his family. As big as he is, it looks like he just took it on his back. Yeah, he did. <laughs> well, that's how he was hauling some freight his own and got a first down you know he really was he was a real en enjoyment to sit and visit with last he night. was fun wasn't he was a fun kid and you know he understood his role trying to come in here i thought he's handled himself very well and we've got a timeout called by the minnesota vikings ESPN's NFL Countdown now on Saturday at 11.30 and Sunday at 11 a.m. Eastern. Join Chris Berman and the faculty of Bristol University for the NFL's best pregame show. Then at 7.30, it's all the highlights on... If you just joined us, you missed another offensive shootout staged by the Minnesota Vikings. They have racked up 50 points in this ball game against division-winning Jacksonville. And Coach Fazio is trying to get all of his defensive players some work, and that time, the reason the Minnesota Vikings had to call a timeout, they only had 10 players on the field. Taylor, the deep man in the eye. Taylor behind Crockett, didn't make it. And Viking unit does not want to give up a touchdown. They're playing for pride right now. 
Boge has got his guys coming off the ball. This whole defense is built on penetration. Jerry Ball does a terrific job of getting inside, but then you see Fisk run down the line, make the play, and stop Taylor for about a half a yard loss. Quinn throws, touchdown Pete Mitchell. Mitchell's first catch of the night, his second touchdown of the season. Well, Jonathan threw that ball, Jonathan Quinn, and the only guy that was going to catch it was Pete. Yeah, and Pete caught it defensively. <laughs> He's right. <laughs> he fired that baby. And somebody needs to get Jonathan Quinn that football, his first touchdown as a pro. I don't know if he wants to remember it, Mike. Well, let him remember the touchdown and forget the 50 that Minnesota racked up. Mike Hollis for the point after. So with two minutes and 56 seconds to go in the game, Jacksonville gets its first touchdown. And Pete Mitchell, the tight end, working on a backup linebacker, backer Pete Gersich. Here it is. He just cuts back inside. Watch that this ball there. Wham! That's a great catch with his hands. Good play action fake. You let your tight end make the move. You anticipate where he's going to be. You make the throw. Brunel encouraging Jonathan Quinn. He knows this club is probably going to need him yet another week in the final regular season game. They hope Brunel will be back for the playoffs. As Jacksonville scheduled now to host a wild card game at Altel Stadium. Mitchell, a terrific receiving tight end, has been absent tonight. That was his first catch. It's been a long night for that man. You know, the other thing, I mean, the, the job that the Jaguars have done offensively, you know, what Chris Palmer has done, last year they go through three quarterbacks. Of course, Rob Johnson's gone, Steve Matthews isn't there. Now, all of a sudden, you wind up with Jamie Martin and then, of course, Jonathan Quinn. But in practice, the way Chris Palmer handles practice, the first guy gets all the work. So, I mean, for a backup to come in and be even mildly efficient, I think is a credit to his ability to coach. He's another one of the, of the assistant coaches in the league who have been mentioned quite prominently for head coaching opportunities. Pretty good compliment to those young quarterbacks, too. And, you know, it's a compliment to the system, too, Mike. Because if you have a system in place and you can plug in quarterbacks and have them be efficient, obviously except for tonight, that, that says a lot for it. Hollis kicks it away. Palmer going to have to bring it out because his own momentum took him into the end zone. He looked at the official. The official was just staring at him like, I can't help you on this one. You're going to have to run with it. You're on your own now. Zach Crockett made the tackle. There you go under Chris Palmer. This is what the quarterbacks have done. Rob Johnson in his debut, 20 for 24. Steve Matthews puts up a bunch of numbers. Jamie Martin got hurt last week in the middle of that one, so he didn't really finish it. And, of course, Jonathan Quinn would rather forget this one than probably remember it. Of course, that Rob Johnson game was the one that got him the huge contract with the Buffalo Bills. One game, $25 million. And, Imagine if he had started he, too. He eventually, I tell you, he eventually will wind up playing for Buffalo, I think, and, and do a good job. Harold Morrow, the new running back. Brackens wraps him up after a gain of a yard. Harold Morrow, one of those guys that's on the scout team, the practice squad. Uh, Brad Johnson ran it for a while. Dennis Green runs his scout team. He did it in college. He's done it as the pro coach here. The head coach running a scout team, I've never seen it any place else, but it makes so much sense. It helps him develop the kids. It helps him keep a pulse on it. I'll guarantee you, you're going to get a good look from the scout team. There's no fooling around. There's an efficiency level to it. Everything that Dennis Green does is to make his football team better in every element. Every guy is involved. One of the other things he said about it is when these guys get up from the practice squad, if I call them up to the... Uh active roster i developed a relationship with them and i know them. two minute warning here in minnesota possibilities was it reggie's farewell at lambeau and a conversation with bob knight for kenny main i'm dan patrick you'll see us after the game do 
do not walk outside like that. 50 to 10. The Vikings are real good. Johnson gives to Morrow. Hardy brings him down after a nice game. One of the staff members marking up Quinn's ball that was his first touchdown pass. His number, the first TD, and then they write in number 83, Pete Mitchell, the guy who caught it. He was trying to remember who caught it. That's why he was hesitating. Trying to remember. That's nice. It'd be a nice souvenir for him. I have a number of them at home. I mean, you, you know, if you look at a game and you, you think back to the to your first start or the first touchdown. And... Did they ever give you any of those balls back that you threw as interception? <laughs> 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 Thanks. That's nice. Yeah, somebody tried to give me the one from Super Bowl 18. I threw it out. <laughs> you are cruel. You big guy. And Woo. it's Christmas. Yeah, thank you very much, Scrooge. Speaking of that, we want to wish all of our viewers a, a wonderful Christmas and a terrific holiday season. Merry Christmas, everybody. Yep. Certainly going to be a happy one for the Minnesota Vikings because they will be 14 and one before they play their next game. We get a chance to go to Dallas next week. The Redskins and the Cowboys in, a, in what has traditionally been a great rivalry. Cowboys going on to the playoffs and a lot of questions swirling around the Redskins. Who will own them? Will management stay in place? Will coaches stay in place? You going to have all the answers next week? No. no. No, I think the I think the hard bids go in on Tuesday. Yes, they're, they're supposed to uh, narrow it down to three groups. Take the three best bids from the estate of Jack Dan Cook. Rumored as much as seven hundred thousand, seven hundred million dollars being bid for the stadium and the football team. Berger to punt it away. Barlow on the return. Into Viking territory. 13 yard return after a 42 yard punt, and Mike Morris made the tackle for the Viking special teams. Only 20 seconds to go in the game. Another brilliant performance by Gary Anderson, who continues to be perfect through the entire year in point afters and field goals. You know, one other thing we were talking about the Pro Bowl is the offensive linemen from the Minnesota Vikings that are going to go. They're going to take their coach, Mike Tice, along. Last year, they gave him a uh, meeting planner as a gift. <laughs> this year, they've decided to take Mike and his wife to Hawaii. <laughs> Unless he wants another meeting what planner. What a generous group of guys they are. Jacksonville running out the clock. They just want to get out of here and go home. There is Mike Tice, the longtime tight end out of the University of Maryland, who has turned out to be an outstanding offensive line coach. Dennis Greenwich, his 14th. Tom Coughlin loses number five. Our final score, the Vikings, 50, the Jaguars, 10. Coming up next, Sports Center, Kenny Main and Dan Patrick with the complete wrap-up of the day in sports. For Joe Theismann, Paul McGuire, Solomon Wilcox, and our entire ESPN crew, this is Mike Patrick. Good night. For